All right, so we are back, and these type of videos are some of my favorite to do. If you guys didn't see this yesterday, which I'm not sure how you didn't, unless you were like me and living in a time vortex because my sleep schedule's all messed up. Not to mention, I feel like I'm in the movie the day after tomorrow because the weather is switching up faster than Logan Paul fans after Coffeezilla went on Joe Rogan yesterday. It's snowing in Wales in March. Speaking of precipitation falling from the sky, yesterday Gibb made the sky fall in the YouTube boxing scene by dropping one of the most amazing trailers and tournament announcements in the history of influencer boxing, but those weren't even the biggest parts of this. There were so many more Easter eggs behind it that I think you guys missed. So let's break this thing down. Gibb is back. He is returning to influencer boxing. And like this video represents, people in this influencer boxing scene, whether it be fighters or promoters, are going to have to pay for the words they said. Break down. Let's go. Pound, top 10 influencer boxers. All right, so the video opens up and Gibb is sitting in what looks like a surveillance room. And that's the perfect way to describe it because he's just surveying all different types of fights, which makes sense because this is one of our first Easter eggs. Gibb is essentially watching potential opponents in the Kingpin tournament. One of which we already know Kenny is going to be in that tournament. And to the right of that screen, you have a very small clip of Tom Zanetti who is in the tournament versus Slim, one of Gibbs' oldest and potentially biggest rivals if we can ever make that fight happen. Next to that, you see a very, very small clip of what to me looks like Jarvis knocking down and knocking out Michael Lee in the Social Gloves 1 event. Again, another kingpin fighter, which then leads me to the fourth screen at the top, Jay Swingler versus Churdley, which also would coincide with Jay being in the damn thumbnail that Gibb put out for this video. Also, you do see on the far left side, Jake knocking out Tyron Woodley, which again is just a nod to saying that Gibb has always got his eye on Jake, the only loss he's ever taken. And then on the far right side, you see Gibb versus Austin. We hear that Austin has an announcement today, and by the time this video goes out, it'll probably already be out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and predict that Austin is in this tournament, and Gibb is also looking at him as a potential rematch. Pound for pound, top 10 influencer boxers. Why is Gibb on that? Gibb is out of one fight. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't won this fight. How the hell is he trying to fight? To be fair, that, that's true. Any of you, anyone who wants it, Gibb, come here. I'll smash you up as well. Nah, I don't think Gibb uh, is really that guy. He just fought a, a weekly. Like, you know, Austin was ruined. Nah, he's not that guy. I know for a fact I'd win that fight if I fought Gibb again. 1,000%. It's been years, Gibby. Where you at, man? Let's go. <laughs> oh, right now. Then you cut to a familiar voice. That is right. It's me talking about a top 10 pound for pound influencer boxing list. And I think in that case, it was a top five list that we did on the Zone X series number four. And then you hear Kenny Dean and my boy Adiola Depot all giving me flack for putting Gibb in my top five, which I stand by. Gibb is a top five pound for pound influencer boxer. The TV screens have switched and now it is those same guys that were on the TV fighting just a second ago. Now chirping at Gibb a little bit like King Kenny in that beta squad video where Chunks was smacking up everyone on the team. I still want to see that man box. All Poppy saying that Gibb isn't really that guy and Jay Swingler saying if they fought again, if they rematch, that he would win a fight with Gibb 1000% doubling down on the again the fact that Jay is in this tournament. I'm just going to accept it as fact. I know it hasn't been announced, but he's in this tournament. There's no other reason to include him in this video. Although Salt Poppy is in this video and he's not in the turn. But that's different in my opinion. I think they're setting that up and teasing that for potentially down the line. Then you have Slim walking up on Gibb once again in one of the, the zone. I think this is X series number three. This is the fight that I think is the best one we can make in the scene right now. The one that's the most organic, natural story between two guys on their rise. So again, just more foreshadowing for potential matchups for Gibb in the future. I have collected many chins over these years, but you simply do not forget your first. The poor lad didn't stand a chance. In 2018, YouTube boxing was all fun and games, but my last two fights were personal. Even though he beat Taylor Holder, it's a draw. Like it was yeah, on yeah, the night, yeah, yeah, it was a draw. Night, yeah. All right, so this is the coolest shot, in my opinion, in the entire video. I don't know who edited this for Gib, but shout out to you because he walks into what looks like a trophy room. And again, I think this is all a green screen outside of the fact that he does have his different robes there. The supreme robe with the leopard print that he wore in the Jay Swingler fight. The blue robe that he wore down to the ring to fight Taylor Holder on social gloves and the black iconic robe 
that he wore in to fight Austin McBrooms to effectively kill Social Gloves. And as Gibb walks into the room, there are moving paintings, playing starchy, grainy video of his fight. It goes through all four of Gibb's big wins so far. Then Gibb becomes fucking multiple man from the Marvel comics and splits off while he's watching the Max Plays fight. A duplicate Gibb walks over to the first Jay Swingler fight and watches that one while holding his mug of coffee. This looked dope. Fair play again to whoever edited this for Gibb. This is sick. But also it's overlaid by the piano keys of the song Skyfall by Adele, which is such a great choice for just the imagery of this video. Unfortunately, we actually can't play the song because YouTube monetization doesn't want anyone to have any kind of fun, but that's not gonna stop us. On to the next scene, and I'm gonna try to recreate it for you guys. This is the end. Hold your breath and count to 10. Feel the earth moving there. The lyrics that overlay what's happening in this part of the video is the signaling of the end of social clubs. The words themselves, this is the end. Again, just a perfect symmetry of visual and word, but also the second part of that line, hold your breath and count to 10. It does in some ways signify Gib getting knocked down early and everyone all of his fans holding their breath thinking, oh no, this may be the 10 count that puts him away. And then Gibb coming back and putting multiple 10s on Austin, again, signifying the end. And then there's a scene of Gibb jumping rope in front of the paramedics and the words come across, feel the earth move. And then the influencer boxing world shook. It moved when Gibb started putting down Austin and eventually finished him. And after he did finish him, Austin had to leave the venue in one of those paramedics and go to the hospital. Let the sky fall, big Gibb. Bring it down when it crumbles. Big Gibber will stand tall and we'll face it all together at Skyfall. <laughs> okay, well, let's see if that makes the video. <laughs> I wish that was some foreshadowing for me actually calling a Gib fight. Unfortunately, I can't right now and I wish I could. But again, it just shows Gib dropping Austin multiple times. Austin hits the ground in that final knockdown and the sky had truly fallen for social gloves but that left the question for gib what was next talking to my mirror like i love you so much curving on my critics like i heard you so what you can't kill my confidence i think i'm the man tally all the f i ever gave on my head lately i've been living like i can't take a loss they wanna help me that's what made me a boss you can't kill my confidence i think i'm the man we don't give a f All right, so the next scene opens up with a skyline shot of London and particularly the Gherkin building, a pretty prominent skyscraper in London that has its own unique kind of shape and build, which I don't think is any kind of reference to Gibb, even though he does have a unique shape. He sits down at the chair and he pulls out three separate papers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is when this video becomes a bar on a Friday night or an old Western movie because here is where the shots fly. Gibb picks up a contract with the logo of Misfits Boxing on it. it says he was offered 250,000 pounds. This is true. And Gibb says it was to fight the Brooklyn beggar, which is obviously slim in this case. Those are some pretty high numbers, but as he says, no one calls him the six-figure gibber, so he takes the paper and spits on it. And that is an interesting move because it does draw the battle lines here for Gib and whatever future he could potentially have on Misfits, which he obviously doesn't give a fuck about. And then he picks up a contract and it has the Global Titans logo on it to fight Mayweather for, a, again, a ridiculous number, one million pounds. This fight was supposed to happen, and I'm not exactly sure what happened as to why this fight never did take place, but then as he says, okay, I'm gonna teach that old man a lesson, here comes the kingpin contract. And if what he says here is true, that he is going to be signing a multi-million dollar multiple fight deal in this tournament, you do wonder what happens with kingpin here. Who are the investors that are putting up this kind of money and will they make that in return? And how do they sustain that business model for a long period of time? Those are questions that we're gonna have to see answered, but you can command that kind of payday, fair play to you. I conquered the last promotion that I was on. I first defeated their most feared fighter and finished them off by knocking out the CEO. But to prove that I am the best, I must now conquer another. Another promotion, but which one? So then we get the shot of a plane taking off and Gibbs saying he's conquered one promotion, 
now he needs to conquer another and he lands in egypt as the camera pans gib is standing in front of the pyramids of giza and it's such a sick outlook and also there's a little reference to primo which is i'm not sure who exactly owns the company but sharky from the beta squad has some sort of stake in it maybe he owns it but he reps it a ton i don't know if that's a shot at kenny in the beta squad or just gib repping one of his boys as well either way that's where you see that then ladies and gentlemen we get a look at how this tournament is going to work eight of the best fighters on youtube are going head to head in a three event boxing tournament to decide who is the best pound for pound youtube boxer march the 12th the eight fighters will face off in a live tournament draw to see who they will be facing in the electrifying qualifier event on april 22nd the qualifiers is just the beginning the second event is going to be even more intense these fighters know each other's strengths and weaknesses and they are going to be looking for every opportunity to take advantage of the third and final event is where it all comes down to who will be crowned pound for pound youtube boxer you'll have to be there to find out then we get a close-up of gibbs standing with boxing gloves on in front of what looks to be a random challenger and this almost reminded me of the disney movie hercules i don't know why it's just reminds me of more of a greek look combined with the egyptian hieroglyph of a representation of the egyptian god i think horus or horus who reenacts someone picking out a name of a fighter which is going to happen on march 12th this is happening live like they're going to pick these names and those fighters don't know who they're going to fight until those names are picked you could have gib and jay the rematch of that right away gib kenny gib also leaks or lets us know the first event date that's april 27th second the second event is where the winners of the qualifying event would face each other and then the third event would be the finals where the winners of the second round would fight each other so it's an eight to four to two format but i have a feeling maybe there's like a third place prize pool where the winner of the losers bracket could come back and potentially win some of that money it just seems like a, a waste to not have the guys you signed for a multi-fight deal continue fighting on these events <laughs> Lord, I can't change. Won't you fly a free bird? One of my favorite scenes in this entire video once again. The song Freebird by Leonard Skinner plays as Gibb turns around, now making his decision to fight on Kingpin. And again, there's some visual messaging here that Gibb is a free bird, that he's not locked down to other promotions that other guys are in, that they can't necessarily go and do what they want. I think that's the message they're trying to send because as he's in the middle of signing this contract, which does say there's some confidential information that should not get out more clues more teases i fucking love this there is a call on his phone from the head of misfits matchmaking mams taylor which gib plainly and flat out takes one look at and ignores puts the phone down as if to say yeah i've made my decision i can't be bothered it makes it official standing with the kingpin logo tournament draw day on the 12th and that is where we end this breakdown. What a video and man, what a visual storyteller Gib is. He is taking his part in an eight man, I think million dollar tournament with Kingpin and it's high stakes, it's high risk, but high reward. This may be the most competitive back to back to back three event showcase we've ever seen in influencer boxing. But what do you guys think of Gib going with Kingpin? How do you think this whole tournament's gonna work out? What's gonna happen in this first event or on the draw on March 12th? I don't have those answers. I will be in London, Wild Face Sensei does the draw. So, guess we'll find out.